Hey guys, so I think that I'm doing this correctly. I've already recorded this video. This will be my third attempt. I was doing or was wanting to do basically a screen recording this week because this week, week 12, I want to talk about essentially the star test. I realize with COVID and everything that's happened right now, the star test isn't happening. Like, we're not having it this year. It has been, what they say, waived. It's been waived. Which, when it very first happened, we really didn't know what that meant. Now, looking back on it, we know, or not necessarily looking back on it, but going into it more, we know that essentially waived means that it is going, if the kid passes the class, basically, if they pass English 1, they pass for the year. However, this does not mean the star is going away by any means. And I know a lot of you or several of you are not teachers, so you may understand why. But for me, this, the star test has to do with feedback. Let's make this a little bit smaller. When I say feedback, that's what this week was all about, is how you give, this feature is unavailable in the free version. Okay. I don't want to talk to you right now. That, that's what the star test is, all, or that's what this week was all about, is how you give feedback to your students, how we're doing that, and especially when it comes to their writing. One of the things that you definitely have to look at when it comes to the writing and giving them feedback is specifically the star writing. The kids need a lot of feedback on how to write the star essay. Many of them have little to no experience, depending on the grade level that you're teaching. For instance, this fourth grade level is the first essay. Now, some of you may know, and some of you may not know, that the they're talking about the essay going away in the lower levels. However, they still are going to have a form of writing. The typical guess is that it's going to be short answers. They used to have short answers on the test, essentially you had three short answers that would ask them a question about a story they had read, something like, after reading To Kill a Mockingbird, <laughs> I wouldn't have read that, but after reading To Kill a Mockingbird, what does Boo, or how does how does Boo feel in the story? That's a terrible short answer, but that, that's the basic idea of it. How does Boo feel in the story? And then the kids would have to respond Basically, with saying something like, after reading To Kill a Mockingbird, it is clear that Boo feels sad, or something of that nature. And so you do still have writing, in that they do still need feedback, and it is still a specific type of writing. The state wants to constantly tell you that it can be applicable to anything, but it really can't. There is a specific form of writing that you do with the star, and so we're gonna discuss that today. For two reasons, I want you to be able to give the kids the feedback that they need if you are going to become a teacher. I also want you to be prepared for your interview. No matter what grade level you teach or where you teach, if you are teaching in the state of Texas, it is a guarantee that in that interview, they are gonna ask you about the STAR test, guaranteed. If they don't, come tell me and I, I promise you, I'll pay you at least $5 because I will totally owe you five bucks because there's just no way. I would bet five, I would bet more than $5, but just because I'm broke, let's, we'll go with five to be on the safe side. I, I would bet you $5 that they will ask you about it. I know that I don't ever do an interview with a teacher that I do not ask about the STAR test. And of course, your generic answers is, oh, they've seen it some in school and all that kind of stuff. They're, they're familiar with it. They know the kids have to take one. They know they have to write an essay. But you, hopefully, will be able to say that you are familiar with that STAR test to the extent that you've seen the rubric and worked closely with the rubric and worked closely with the idea of giving students feedback on their writing and how to handle the STAR specifically. For those of you who are not becoming teachers, I will say, if you have kids, this might interest you just for the simple fact that most parents don't really understand how the STAR test works. And there's lots of reasons for that. The basic reason is that the STAR is really convoluted and confusing for even the teachers who give it oftentimes. It's scored very strangely. I'll explain. 
you can score between a one and a four on a star essay. A four is the highest, a one is the lowest. However, there's more to it than just that. You essentially have two graders. So for each grader, they read your essay and they score it one, two, three, or four. However, the state does not really put out the fact that you can actually get a zero. If you get a zero, that means you get no points for the essay, and that is pretty big because the essay is worth 24% of the grade. And I know what you think. You're like, well, that's not too bad. That's a quarter. But in the grand scheme of things, it is the most or the heaviest weighted portion of the test all the way around the zero. You get between the one and the four. Each grader scores you. One grader gives you a one, just as an example. One grader gives you a two. They then add these together and multiply these by two to give you an overall score of a six. This is what the kids end up seeing, so and the parents. So it can often be confusing to them, and their heads are like, I don't get it. I thought that, you know, I had this score. I thought that I had that score. They, the grade that they're really going for is a 16. That is a perfect score. That means that each grader gave them a four. And that was multiplied by two to get them a 16. Now, this is the raw score points, not the actual scale score, because that gets very, very confusing. But essentially, this is the score you're going for. This is extremely difficult to get, and it's important as a teacher that you understand how difficult it is for students to get this. I'll give you an example. Uh, in 2000 and probably 17, there were about 376 sophomores that took the English star. Three of them got this score. Three. So I'll let you do the math there. But what we're gonna do is we are going to go through today and we're gonna look at the rubric and I'm gonna show you some examples. I'll try to go through it quickly so this video doesn't get too lengthy because I know these videos, some of these videos can get really long. But essentially what I want you to do is at the end of this, you are gonna score seven essays. You're going to decide, based off that rubric, whether you think they get a 1, a 2, a 3, or a 4. And you're going to share your scores on Blackboard. I want you guys to discuss how you came up with these scores. Why you thought the essay got that particular score that it got. That kind of thing. That's our end goal for this. This is what we would have been doing in class, but obviously we are not going to be able to do. Just to help you get this idea of how do we give these kids this feedback, what kind of things are they looking to do to do well with the STAR test so that you know and you can tell them. Also, even like I said, even if you're not going to be a teacher, hopefully if you have kids, you can look at your student, your kid, and say, Okay, well, you got a two on your star. Did your teacher talk to you about this? Or did your teacher talk to you about that? So that maybe if their teacher doesn't help them as much, you can help them. At the very least, you can be informed on how to do this and can help your students in the future. Uh, as for the year, the 2019 guide that we're going with, I chose this one because it is, as of right now, the most recent one that has been released. This is the scoring guide. This can be accessed from the TEA website. So you can actually get these real essays and this scoring guide to, from the TEA website if you want to use it for future reference. I always think it's great to show the kids essays of other kids and to let them see how other kids did and how other kids wrote. It's also often a good idea to let them score other kids' essays to see what they think they would have gotten because they'll put that own re their own reasoning there and that should help them with their own personal essay. So this is the prompt for this particular week and it's important that we know the prompt so we know what the kids are writing about type thing. Write about one invention that is important in your life. 
So this is what they're writing about. Now this prompt seems like it should be pretty straightforward, but I can tell you it can get confusing to kids. Tell what the invention is and explain what makes it important. So they really kind of have a two-part prompt here. They have to not only tell what the invention is, but they have to tell why it is important. And you will see a lot of kids, if they have a two-part prompt, leave off the second portion. So that is definitely something feedback-wise that you could talk to them about. I would also discuss this aspect of the prompt. This is always there. In every STAR essay, at the beginning of the essay, they have a read and they have a think. And this goes all the way up to high school. It starts in grade four, grade seven, grade nine, grade 10, all the way up, okay? This doesn't seem like a big deal, but this information, I actually tell my kids to scribble through it. I, I do. I tell them to ignore it, to take their pencil, or their, their, well, they'd have a pencil, but to take their pencil and scribble through this information. The reason why I tell them this is because this information can often confuse kids. Not all kids, a lot of kids do just fine with it, but some kids get confused or they rely on this information too heavily. For instance, I guarantee you had kids in this essay write about the light bulb, a bunch of kids, because that invention was given to them. And so they don't have to think a whole lot, so they just automatically go with it. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but originality really matters in these essays. The more original you can be, the better. So if you rely on the prompt that they give you, that can be a problem. Other issues is that it can confuse the kids about what they're actually supposed to be writing about. For instance, true story. Several years ago, when the STAR essay very first came out, it's probably 2012. I mean, it was, it was a while ago we gave a benchmark to the freshmen and in this box right here, okay, it had a quote from, I can't remember who, but a famous writer that said something about being a flower among the weeds, right? Sorry, I don't know why my pen is messing up. Flower among the weeds. And that wasn't exactly what it was, but it was something along those lines. It, it talked about flowers, and it did use the word weed, being a flower among the weeds. And then the prompt, this portion, said, write an essay explaining the importance of being unique. That's what they were supposed to write about, is the idea of being unique. A ton. And when I say a ton, I would say over 75 kids wrote about weed legalizing marijuana. I know, seems crazy, right? They wrote about it because they saw that word weed in this box up here, and that's, and all of a sudden in their head, they're like, oh, I'm supposed to be writing about legalizing marijuana, and it just kind of went from there. So I would highly recommend, feedback-wise, that you tell your students to ignore this information, or your, your, your kids, if your kids are taking this test. Tell them not to read it. I actually have my kids scribble through it because I think it creates a situation where it's just too tempting to look at it if you don't actually scribble through it. So I have them scribble through it. It also reminds them in their head that this is not what they're supposed to be focused on. It's right down here where it says write. So like I said, for this particular essays, they're going to be talking about inventions and why they are important. So in order to get a one, that's the lowest score that you can get. There are certain things that you will need to do, or it's divided into three sections, organization, ideas, and language. Essentially, organization, this is gonna have to do with like how well the, the essay flows and how structured it is. That's basically what they're looking at. For a one, there's gonna be little to no structure. The STAR test likes to use the word inappropriate, I would not use that word with your kid or your, your students. I would explain to them that basically it's lacking organizational structure. There's not structure there. It's also lacking clarity and direction. The essay may be scattered all over the place. One minute it's talking about this idea. The next minute it's talking about that idea. There's information in the essay that's not needed. So you talk about the idea that most ideas are generally related to the topic of the prompt, but a lot of ideas are not. 
a lot of ideas are thrown in there that aren't necessary or there's not a central idea there's not a central main thought that drives the paper the progression is weak overall you have a lot of repetition and wordiness and repetition is extremely important with the star test that's a big one kids do it a lot they repeat themselves a lot and it's going to get them in trouble you definitely want to, to avoid repetition this is when you lose that clarity you lose that direction the ideas themselves are, I like to tell the kids, you're basic. The ideas themselves are basic. Obviously, this is going to depend on the age level. But when I say basic, there, there's not a lot of depth to them. If they ask about the idea of being brave, they say, oh, well, policemen are brave, period. And, and firemen are brave. Nurses are also brave. And they, they start listing their ideas. There's not a lot of explanation with them. There's not a lot of depth with them. The language and conventions, if you're scoring a one and it has to do with language and conventions, this comes down to grammar. Now, grammar's tricky when it comes to the star test. To a large degree, grammar doesn't affect them unless it impedes the reading. So, this is when you're reading an essay and you have to stop and go back and reread or you have to slow down and look at it again because you're unsure of what they're saying the essay may be too simple it may be awkward uncontrolled basically the grammar is kind of all over the place and there's lots of grammar issues a lot a few grammar issues like I said not gonna get you they're not gonna mess with that if you misspell a word that's fine if you misspell several words as long as those you can understand what those words are saying that's fine. Like, as long as when the reader goes through and reads that essay, they don't have to spend, you know, several minutes trying to figure out what that word is, you're okay. But if it, if it starts to get too heavy, where there's just massive issues just consistently, and the clarity of the essay is lost, well, then you start to have issues, and you're more in a one range. An example of a one Inventions. First off, you don't need this title, by the way. They don't take off for this title, but some feedback to give your kids. They don't want you to have the title. And they do actually, at STAR workshops and things like that, they do actually tell you that they don't want the titles on there. So, inventions are exciting for me. Electricity is very shocking. Remember what I told you about how they were going to steal this idea? They didn't really steal the Thomas Edison idea of the light bulb, but they came real close. I mean, electricity, light bulb, they go very, very hand in hand. They didn't venture out with their ideas very far from the basics that they were given. So, electricity is very shocking. Electricity came from lightning. Benjamin Franklin found out first. He did a experiment with a kite during a storm. It is used for planes, iPads, and dryers. That is fun. This last part, remember how we talked about the organ with the organization, you would have information that's not needed? This last part doesn't really seem to go with the first part. I mean, yes, we get the idea that you're explaining the uses, but instead of having like a main idea here where they talk about how electricity is important because they just kind of throw in the things it's used for. No matter what, what handmade things are, always made with hands, repetitive. Right off the bat, I would definitely say this is repetitive. If I was grading this essay, that's what I would tell the student. Now, obviously, with lower kids, you might want to come up with different wording or talk to them about how you know what they're saying, repeating themselves. But I would say that this is repetitive. Paper airplanes soar like eagles. Origami brings imagination. Okay, wait. What's going on here? Why are we not talking about electricity? So this, once again... This comes back to organization is being lost. It's random. It's scattered, kind of all over the place. Wooden stuff is hard to break. Are, are we even in the same essay? You can't separate it. It cannot be pulled apart. Some toys are made out of wood. What has happened? So what the state said is down here. They said at the end of this very limited writing performance, the writer provides the unclear central idea. Whoops. That without inventions, life would not be cool. So it's way down here. That's what they're talking about. 
To develop this idea, the writer begins by explaining how electricity was discovered. However, instead of maintaining focus, that where they lose their focus, the writer shifts abruptly from one off-topic idea to another. No matter what handmade things are always made with hands, paper flowers are good for friends, family, and more. Notice they didn't say anything about the misspelling of this word. So they didn't mark them down for that word. They weren't getting them from their spelling. This was more their organization issues right here. Clothes are, I'm sorry, cloths are also handmade. Wooden stuff is hard to break. The random presentation of ideas makes the essay difficult to follow and demonstrates the writer's lack of understanding of the expository test. So this is a one overall. Now let's look at a two. With a two, you have a little up in your game. Once again, like I said, guys, your state, same areas. You're looking at organization, development of ideas, language, all the way through. So this is organization, ideas, grammar. When they say language, that's what they mean. Well, I would say grammar, grammar and vocab. That's what, something I left off that actually really matters. Vocabulary is really, really important. They definitely want high level vocab. It makes a difference. For this, you do have, I'm sorry, you do see some organization. The organization structure is evident, but it's weak. The ideas are not always logical, less controlled. The topic specified in the prompt, but the writer's central idea is weak. So they may have a central idea here. They moved up a little bit from, from a one, but it's weak. It's all real, like I said, basic. The ideas are minimal. The essay is superficial. When they talk about superficial, that's what they mean. It's very surface, surface level. You don't have that depth. You're not going into, like, like the hero example. If you're talking about a nurse being a hero, you're not going into why she's a hero. There's no thoughtfulness. There's no, and when they say all this, what they really mean, guys, is there's no originality. There's no depth. Here you have, you may still have some grammar issues occurring that are actually impeding the paper that that cause it to be lower level. A big thing that would bump it from a three to a two, like bump it down, would definitely be vocab. It would make a huge difference. So let's look at a two. My special invention is a computer. I have so many to tell you about. So many? Yeah. I, I have so many to tell you, but see like that. This would be a grammar issue. Notice how I had to go back and reiterate this idea. I'm like, is that what they meant? Do they mean so many? That is what I'm talking about when I say flow, which you can show to your kids by um, reading essays like this, going through and talking to them. I will say I would not recommend pulling kids' essays from your class that are poor and talking to them about their own essays in that regard. If, like I said, I think I told you guys this in class. If you are going to discuss their essays with them, it needs to be positive. I would definitely, if you're going to look at negative things, I would look at basically students that aren't yours. I would pull these essays off the STAR website or from other places. The STAR website, like I said, or the TA website is really the best. And this is called the STAR Scoring Guide. That's where I got these. But I definitely would not use their essays. I think that's just demoralizing to students. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've already told you that. So anyway, off, off topic. But so right here would definitely be a convention, a grammar issue. To tell you about a computer, a computer, like about game, videos, and other stuff. So there's all, this is grammar. This is conventions. So how you saw kind of organization issues, there, this is definitely grammar issues up here. I will say there is organization in this essay where you didn't see it in the last one. See this first, uh, second, third, so you, okay. You do have transitions, which they, they look for. You do have basic structure that is there. So there is basic structure here. Now it is basic, but it's definitely here. But there is grammar issues. So first you can learn on the computer. You can play fun games on the computer. You can also play on it. You can learn on the computer. Notice the repetition. Um, you can play on the computer. Yeah, so they've said you can play on the computer. You can learn on the computer like four times right there. Second, it's fun to play on a computer. But some people, it's not fun to them. Also, you can explore on the computer. Also, you can learn new things on the computer. They've said this right here, like, I don't know, four or five times now. Using a computer or iPad, you can go to Google and ask that website some questions. Third, you can talk to friends using a software called Skype. Also, videos 
like on YouTube and other websites. Also, you can see websites like YouTube, blogs, and other websites. They're very, this is very, very, very repetitive. And this definitely has that superficial aspect. Notice that they tell you that you can learn, but they don't go into depth about how or what or how it, it, it helps with learning, that kind of thing. They don't expand on that idea. So what the state said about it down here, Instead of explicitly stating the central idea, the writer organizes the essay around the implied idea that a computer is a useful invention. They organize the essay around three major ways. Individuals can use a computer, which these three major ways would definitely be their organization. So it does help their essay. I mean, this probably is the one thing that bumped their essay from a one to a two. Uh, they can learn on a computer, play on a computer, talk to friends. Moreover, repetition. Um, you can learn, you can play, definitely played into it. The essay has a superficial quality because details are too partially presented. Like they said, they could, they, when, they, when they talk about learning or down here, they, they bring up Skype and YouTube, the, the state does. They talk about Skype, they talk about YouTube, but they don't go into really any examples. A great thing that this kid could have done if you were working with this kid would be to include an anecdote. The state loves these. Anecdotes, anecdote is just a fancy word for short story. It's a short personal story. So basically you say, one time when I was younger, I was having trouble with my math, but I Skyped my grandmother in Colorado and she was able to help me over the internet. Something like that. It's a short little story that you tell personal about yourself where you experienced it, that would have put their essay a little bit higher. A, a three, a score point of a three would be the next one. So if you're starting to get in three and four, that means you're getting into essays that are, are really, really pretty good. Keep in mind a four is extremely hard to get. So a three is a pretty solid essay. Once again, you have three areas, organization, ideas, language and conventions. So once again, you have that structure, you have the ideas, and then you have your grammar and vocab. I will say, typically, I'm sorry about my pen, y'all. I don't know why it's not really connecting well. I will say, typically, with vocab, you're looking at a situation where you're starting to get higher level vocabulary now because that really does matter. The state really looks into that, the word choice. Look, that's even the first thing they said right here. The writer's word choice is clear and specific, so their vocabulary is getting much more high level than what it was. The sentences are varied. What this means is they may have a short, you know, uh, simple sentence like, my favorite invention is the computer, period. And then they have a long sentence the computer is the best because it helps us with learning and playing and in general connecting with other people, period. So you've got that short little choppy sentence kind of and then that long sentence. So this is that varied structure that they're talking about. They also demonstrate good grammar overall. They may have some grammar issues here, but they don't have anything too heavy. Maybe here and there, there are some, some structure issues for the most part. It flows really well and makes a lot of sense. There is definite organization, solid organization going on for this. And ideas are good. I, that's what I would, would, that's how I would definitely differentiate between a three and a four. For a three, you have good ideas that are explained well. For a four, you have excellent ideas. You have that originality. You've gone that, that extra step. So let's look at a three. Once again, they don't need a title. Obviously, the title doesn't count all for them, but they don't need that. Everybody has a favorite invention. Notice this, this exclamation point. This gives the student a form of like voice and excitement. I wonder what is going on with my pen. I don't know. Anyway, voice and excitement. You can almost hear their personality, so that's going to make a huge difference for them. It says uh, cars, phones, or even toys. Mine is an ice cream machine. It's so simple, making your own ice cream. With an ice cream machine, you only need a few ingredients. You can watch 
you can watch your ice cream being made and then you can enjoy your tasty treat. Right off the bat, this one is original. Now the state may not say anything about it being original, but I will say it matters. Keep in mind, guys, and this is something you should tell your students. These people go into a room and for eight hours a day, Monday through Friday, because they do it for a five day week, sometimes as many as two weeks, depending on how often they grade, or how many they grade, I'm sorry. Monday through Friday, they read these essays. Well, everyone, because the prompt talked about this light bulb, right? Remember back here, the light bulb? I know you can't see it as well anymore, but so many people are gonna write about the light bulb. So many people are gonna write about cell phones. So many people are gonna write about computers, really. So when they get something that's different, you know, if you've been, if you've read 400 essays that day and you're to essay 402 and all of a sudden an, uh, an ice cream machine comes across, you're like, oh, this is going to score so much better. Just because it's different. It breaks that monotony for you mentally and so they're going to score better. Originality really does matter. Uh, the fact that they have voice is going to make a difference. You only need some ingredients. You need sea salt, ice cubes. What does that say? Oh, and of course the machine. All you need to do is plug in the machine, but the ingredients in the machine, spread it out, then turn it on. Put the ingredients in the machine, I'm sorry. The cool part is that you can watch the ice cream being made. This is good except for this. So I know this is a fourth grader, but cool is slang. It's lower level vocab. I would definitely talk to them about their vocabulary and about upping it a little bit. It's also a little bit repetitive. Not bad, but they're talking about the ingredients a lot. And it, if I was giving them feedback, I would definitely look, about the, look at the idea of change it up. Maybe even something small as changing up the wording. If you still wanna talk about the ingredients, talk about maybe the components. I know that's a big word for a fourth grader, but something of, of that, that idea, the idea of changing it up. The, uh, what's another, the items. They would know items. The items that go inside, that changes it up a little bit from just saying ingredients over and over again. Because when they first used the word, it was excellent vocab. They were using a high vocab level word. But the more that they use it, the more it loses its emphasis. So you definitely wanna talk to them about changing things up and avoiding, once again, you have that repetition and low level vocab. So you would want to avoid those. The best part is eating it. The first time you try it, it tastes so good. In my opinion, I think homemade ice cream is better than store-bought ice cream. This is good. You have voice, you hear their, their, their depth here. This allows a certain amount of depth. They go beyond just telling you about ice cream, if that makes sense. I mean, they are telling you about it, but they're adding more ideas, more depth to it. And this, do you agree with me? There's a little bit of an issue there, but I doubt they got counted off for that. I mean, this machine is awesome. Once again, I would definitely work on this kid's vocab because you only need some ingredients and the repetition. Repetition and vocab would definitely be something I would talk to them about. If I was giving them feedback on that, this, that's definitely something I would say to them. This scored a three. The state said that it's satisfactory. The writer presents a central idea that I, about the ice cream machine. The progression of ideas is logical and controlled. They write chronologically, which that is that works. I mean, that's, they can totally write that way. They give you examples. The essay reflects some thoughtfulness in the comparison of homemade ice cream and store-bought ice cream. Clear, specific word choice, right? It's simple, sea salt, the machine is awesome, establishes a tone. And that tone they're talking about, that's the voice. That's where you can kind of hear them. So let's look at a four. If you're scoring a four, you should be patting yourself on the back. You should be, that kid should be so proud of themselves. It is so hard to get a four. Same areas, organization, ideas, language, right? If you got a four, your organization structure is very clear, very easy to follow. The paper flows. The central idea is extremely obvious. It's in your face, like the reader cannot miss it. It's logical and well controlled. The ideas themselves, this is when you get into that more original, more in-depth. There's more explanation. They have expanded on their ideas. They have gone beyond the surface level. They are thoughtful and engaging. 
And last but not least, this is when you're gonna get into high level vocab is definitely gonna be used, at least some. And remember, high level is relative. So when I say high level for a fourth grader, high level is gonna be different than for like a high school kid. But high level vocab is gonna be used at least some. And of course, you are going to have excellent grammar. They may have a few issues, but not many. Okay, guys, I'm gonna stop this really quickly. But let's go back to where we were. Essentially, high-level vocab, expanded on ideas, and good organizational structures. Let's look at a four. I love medicine. Right off the bat, once again, just like in that three, you have that voice, that really good thought-provoking idea there. So I love medicine. It rocks because it helps me a lot. Something that causes allergies to go away and is part of my morning routine is called the life-changing medicine. So this is good. It's a good intro. Routine is a good vocab word, especially for a fourth grader, guys. I mean, you're talking about a pretty young aged kid. So you've got pretty good vocab there right off the bat. You also know right off the bat what they're going to be talking about, what their invention is, that kind of thing and why it's important to them. They may not specifically say it's important, but you know that it cures their allergies. So you have all those things kind of going on. You have good structure, one reason, the next reason, the final reason. You have organization well laid out there. So one reason why I like medicine is because it keeps me from sneezing and coughing. I need medicine because I am allergic to grass, pollen, and dust when they get up in my nose, I start sneezing like crazy. Because I have a lot of my mom's genes, this is good vocab, because I have a lot of my mom's genes, I have her asthma for about once a year. And to help my mom, to help my, to help me, my dad gives me a breathing treatment, which involves the one and only medicine. I will say this right here, I know I just struggled with reading that. I would definitely not think that that was a convention issue. This is more just, can I read the writing? And a lot of that's coming from it being copied. I imagine the original was probably a little bit easier to read. The next reason why this stuff is important, so they address that prompt specifically, is because it helped my awesome mom when she hurt her leg, when she ran, when she something a step on our staircase. One afternoon while I was watching TV, I heard a something the stairs cry near the stairs. I knew it was my mom, so I flipped over the couch, found her, and flew up the stairs as fast as I possibly could. Remember how I told you earlier the star test likes anecdotes? This is an anecdote. So, not only have they told you that they like medicine, they have heavily expanded my pen not working is really frustrating me. Heavily expanded on their idea. They've gone into great depth explaining each thing. This is one reason, and I'm going to explain it in this one big long paragraph. I'm going to give an anecdote in this other paragraph that's lengthy and understandable. And then I'm finally going to give my third reason, which is also lengthy. It took away the pain. Furthermore, each one of them is different. This one addresses how medicine helped a family member. This one addresses how it helped the pain from her twin sister. And this one addresses how it helped her. So each one of these examples are different. You have originality, you have depth. A lot of students probably did not do medicine. It's very origi original. And you have good vocab like routine and that kind of thing. The state itself gave it a score point of a four. In this essay, the writer establishes a clear central idea that medicine is very helpful, especially to the writer's family. Formulate para paragraph to paragraph transitions, one reason, the next reason, the final reason. Do not detract from the logical and well-controlled progress of ideas. Because all ideas are strongly related to the topic, the writer effectively develops the response through the use of personal experience and anecdotes. They love those. Which makes the essay thoughtful and engaging. Word choice. They bring up the idea of genes, asthma, breathing treatment. And of course, like I said, even though they didn't mention the idea of her using the words routines, it, it elevates her essay. Even down here where she talks about succeeded. 
that that elevates the essay. That's a higher level word, especially for a fourth grader. So these are all things that you want to look at. Now that we've gone through and we've looked at each one of these score points, what I want you guys to do is to look at this same prompt, okay? You are going to go through and you are going to score, I've already said this, but I'll say it again, seven essays. These seven essays are right here. They are on Blackboard so that you can pull them up and access them easily and spend all the time that you need with them. Your scoring should be based off the rubric, which you have. These are the rubrics, right? Here's the score, the rubric for four. Here's the rubric for three, so on and so forth. So your scoring should be based off the rubric that we just discussed. Think about it in regards to if you were giving your kids feedback, what kind of things would you tell them? And that's the kind of stuff that we want to share. So in your Blackboard discussion this week, basically we want at least one discussion post where you say, I scored essay one, a two. Let's say you gave it a two. And then explain why. You don't have to go into major depth. You, maybe you just think that the organization was... Ugh, my pen is driving me crazy. Confusing. Um, maybe you think that the vocab was too low level. Vocab. I think it's going dead. My pen, I mean. Maybe you think the vocab was too low level. Whatever reasoning that you have. So do your seven essays. I also want you guys to discuss your differences. Like, for instance, if you notice that someone scored this essay number one a three or a four, you might remark about why. Like, talk to them about why they scored it differently than you. Because that's a big thing that we need to take into account is how these essays are scored. Because that's how we get the feedback to our kids is through how they're going to be scored, what's going to be expected of them. And that will be your overall idea for this week. I hope you guys are doing well. And hopefully my video for next week will be easier. We'll be talking about modifications next week. If you need anything, let me know. And I will talk to you, sort of, soon.